but you, uh, sorry, I know I'm killing you, but this is probably the thing you want to know. We're going to do a, obviously we're running on the American Racer 1053. You got some pass outs on that. I've got Scott Junod real quick. He's probably going to go over the specs of a tire. Look at all you guys sitting down now. So, yeah. You know, I had to say, hey, I'm a pretty smart guy. I save this till the end. Everybody's like, what? So, you probably didn't listen to anything I say, but this one you're going to listen to. So, he's going to go over the specs of the AR1053 MTP tire, uh, Kevin Piercy um, at Hickory. Um, he's got those tires, but Scott right here is going to go in depth of what a lot of you guys want to know. Thanks a lot. Uh, pardon my cold. I've got a horrible cold living in western Pennsylvania. It's as you've, if you've been up there, you'll you'll realize. Anyway, so uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody here uh, in the Cars Tour for giving us the opportunity to be the tire supplier. And thanks to Jack, um, as we've worked with Jack off and on and uh, different stuff for the last couple of years, and we're pretty excited about being part of this. And I see a lot of familiar faces uh, from from back when I wore different colors. A um, couple people I want to introduce, uh, that very large fellow right there that you can't misplace, that's Scott McAdoo. He's our, uh, he's our logistics manager and stuff at the, at the factory, as well as a, a field engineer for us. And then uh, Sean Lestina works for Carolina Racing Supply as our, as our distributor in the area. Um, Phil and Lynn, raise your hands over there. Uh, they're with MTP. That's who you'll probably see at the racetrack most of the time, if not all the time. Pretty sure. So anyway, the sheets that we passed out, I uh, want to go over a couple of things. I've, I've had some email traffic where people have been sending some stuff and a few phone calls here and there. And we'll try to answer any questions that you have. And if we don't get them answered here, we'll be hanging around. If you don't want to ask the question in front of everybody, we, we're available to, to uh, answer any questions you might have. Um, and Scott, tell me if there's something I'm forgetting that I need to say. Um, first thing, uh, section width 10 and a half inch, or excuse me, uh, tread width 10 and a half, section width 13. Uh, target rollout on these circumferences is 85 inches. Those will be like any bias tire, and if you've seen one made, you'll understand why it's very difficult to make all your tires exactly 85 inches. Nor do you want to, because you want to have some stagger options. So plus or minus an inch is what you'll see. You'll see anything from an 84 to an 86 inch tire. Generally not that big. 85 and a half is pretty much and below is where we'll be at. Um, tire pressures. Um, other than Concord, what's on your schedule, our, our, our recommended minimums will probably be just 25, 15, and you can work from there. Pretty standard for, for a bias four ply tire. Um, as far as how that matches up with sizing, you're probably going to pick up somewhere in the neighborhood of half to three quarters of an inch just with 10 pounds of air split from right to left and another half inch or so hot after you hot lap it. So if you want an inch and a quarter of stagger, buy the same size on the, on the chalk marks off the stack. That's where you're going to end up hot. Okay? Any questions on that? That's pretty standard for a bias ply tire. If you've run, if you've run a competitive brand, then you'll understand that's probably about the same. So, um, pressure builds on the right will be six to eight after 20 lap run. Probably three to four on the left. That's what you'll see. Um, again, there's the recommended minimums. One other thing I didn't have on this sheet, but we've just done quite a bit of data collection on spring rate. You guys are all big on that. You might want to make note of this. Um, at 25 PSI, the spring rate on the right side tires, uh, the same tire, you're running the same on left and right, is, is 40, 40 pounds at the 25. At 15, it's 35. So if you want to write that down, that's, that's what we have. How does that compare? If you're familiar with the old Goodyear 2902, that was roughly at 25 pounds, was 45 pound spring rate. So you can see where our carcass is softer than the Goodyear. If you're familiar with the other competitive brand, I won't even bring their name up, but uh, if you're familiar with those guys, this carcass will be closer to that than it will be the Goodyear. Because the Goodyear was just stiff as a brick. 
So these are a little bit more forgiving, throw a little bit more camber too. Okay, mounting procedures. This might be the more controversial. This is a directional tire, generally because of the lap splice in the tire. You always want to have the arrow pointing forward with the exception, and we're recommending this and you can try it, of the left front. Turn that one so the arrow is backwards. Because of the braking force that you're going to run into, you'll be braking into the edge of that splice and can actually cause the tread splice to, to chip a little bit. Never seen a tire fail because of a line on a tread splice, so don't be concerned about that. But just cosmetically, just understand that run them all three the same direction except the left front and turn that one backwards. Okay? Um, what was, was, it, was there something else on there that you wanted to talk about? Oh, you do? Okay. Do you have any questions? I mean, we'll be around. Yes, go ahead, sir. Well, it's just been, depending on, most people have the, really use the left front to get the car to turn, and so there's more braking force on the left front than the right. Am I wrong, right? Uh huh. You're not going to have a failure. You might have, you might see the splice line, but you're not going to have a failure. That, that that's we're not talking failure, guys. First, get that out of your head. On the, I, everybody can hear me, man. <laughs> so, so half of us are running a bump stop on the right front, mm -hmm. and probably putting a little bit more pressure on the right front. At least some of us are. Look, the tires are not—they're symmetrical. You can run them either direction you want to go. They're painted on both sides, so they're going to say "Pretty American Racer" on both sides of it, no matter which side you turn out. The only thing you're concerned about as far as that direction arrow is the lap splice. If you're going to be using a ton of braking force, that's a free rolling axle position until it's under brake. You might want to turn that one backwards. I don't really care. In your drive positions, your power positions off the rear, you've got to make sure that those arrows are pointed forward. Okay? Because that's, you know, you're not going to be using that. That's where you're going to get most of the, you know, most of the abuse on that splice. On your front, if you're using the right front to, with a lot of braking force, turn it around too. That's the only reason that we're using this recommendation. A lot of guys that we've done some testing over the years, it was the left front that we saw that took the most abuse and that we, we alleviated most of that by switching the, switching the tire around in an opposite direction. Okay? Thank you for no more questions. We'll be available anytime you guys want. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, real quick, we'll wrap this up. Um, once again, just thank all y'all for coming out uh, and, and for what we're doing. A uh, couple quick things. Um, we've got the in, uh, entry forms for both divisions, registrations for both divisions, contingency packets for both divisions, all available right here at this table. Um, we can take credit card, cash, whatever that stuff. Um, so if you want to get some of those knocked out of your out of the way, be a great time to do it. Um, so uh, just just want you make you aware of that. Um, and real quick before we all go, um, we'll, we're we're all going to be here. Myself, Jack, others, we're going to be here. Um, sponsors, different stuff, we're going to be here milling around. So. All those questions that, because it never fails, those, those questions y'all didn't ask in front of everybody, uh, y'all can come, come beat me up here individually. So, uh, but real quick, uh, tour owner Jack McNally is going to say a couple things. Thank you. Thanks for coming out this evening. Thanks to Michael Alvarez and Roush Yates. Uh, thank you, competitors. To say that Chris and I are excited for the beginning of this season would be a gross understatement. With almost 80 teams registered, it's, it's just mind-boggling to us. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's just 
fulfilling. We've, I've done this a long time, and this, I'm almost speechless, to be honest with you. Uh, just quickly, um, I do want to talk to you about Racing Business 101. Now, this has nothing to do with start lines, tech, safety, or anything. It deals with the business of racing. Racing is a business, and I'm sure you owners, dads out there are paying the bills. You know it's a business. It's a big business. But aside from that, as any business is, it's built on partnerships. No business. I don't care if you're selling hot dogs or a barber shop. You've got to have a partnership, cooperation between people. Racing is a business that needs partnerships. Competitors cannot stand on their own. Competitors need sanctioning bodies. They need vendors and suppliers. They need media, and they need fans. The sanctioning body needs the same thing. The suppliers and the vendors, the Roush Yates, the CV Products, the American Racers, they need the same thing. They need competitors. They don't have competitors if there's not a sanctioning body. If there's no sanctioning body, there's no racing. If there's no racers, there's no sanctioning body. There's no need for vendors because they have nothing to sell to anyone. So the main thing, what I want you to take from this is that you are not on an island by yourself. Chris and I are not on our little island. We need everybody in this room. We need the media. We need the suppliers and the vendors because they support what we're trying to do here. And we definitely need you competitors. And we're going to treat you that way. We're going to treat you fair and square. We're, we'll bend, but we're not going to break. We were asked at lunch today by a guy, I don't know, he's, right, he's, he might even be here. He said, are you guys going to tech the cars? No, we're not going to tech any cars. Of course we're going to tech cars. Because our, our position is to provide a fair and equitable platform for everybody to compete. I don't care who I write a check to for $5,500 in the Supers. I don't. It doesn't make any difference to me. I'm going to write it to someone. So what we're going to do is pr pr uh, provide a platform that everybody can come and feel that they are appreciated and that they can compete fairly on a level playing field. What we want from you folks is support, and we want you to support our partners if you need any of their services, goods, or whatever. We want you to be kind and considerate to the media. We need the media. We need these people printing, writing, talking, doing whatever to help build the series. Everybody in this room needs someone else in this room. Better than that, everybody in this room needs everyone else in this room. So don't get the idea, oh, I, I, they need me. We don't need you. Not if you have that attitude. We need you if you want to come and cooperate. Be on time. Drivers, I hate looking for drivers. My God, the only thing you've got to do is be at a certain place at a certain time. Short of goodness, you can tell time. Okay, I know it's been a long night. We're going to cut it off now. We're 10 minutes late. What? I was just come beat us up. <laughs> Again, thanks to Roush Yates. There's still some goodies. I saw Michael Alvarez over there eating. Thank you all. We'll see you on the 28th.